Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear respected guests at home I hope you are all well inshallah And welcome back to another episode of Stories from Al-Kahf uh, With us uh, Sheikh Sajid Omar Alhamdulillah uh, We previously discussed the beginning uh, steps of uh, the story of when giants meet That's the story of Musa and Khidr And inshallah today we will be expanding on that uh, how are you, Sheikh? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. How are things? Uh, Allahumma laka alhamd. All praises belong to Allah. How, you, how have you been? Alhamdulillah, everything's been well. Alhamdulillah, no Alhamdulillah. problems. Uh, I hope you're enjoying your stay in uh, England and Allahumma hope that everything is going well. Everything is well, Alhamdulillah. All praises belong to Allah. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, so going off of uh, last week's episode, we discussed uh, who Musa and who Yusha were going to see Khidr. But we actually haven't discussed Khidr at all. Who is Khidr? Why is his name Khidr, for example, uh, and a few other aspects to the man himself? I, th- I believe in the Quran, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that he's a righteous slave. Mm. So, could you please just expand on on Khidr as a person, inshallah? Yeah, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbi wa man wala. Uh, barakallahu fiqum and to our viewers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallahu khairan for those questions. Yes, so Khidr. Uh, obviously is an interesting uh, mm. character in the story uh, Khidr, uh, Allah doesn't refer to him as Khidr in the Quran mm. But his name uh, was Khidr and this is attested to by the vast majority uh, of scholars Imam Al-Qurtubi, uh, a famous uh, Maliki uh, scholar and Mufassir A person who's explained the Quran uh, He attributes this to the majority of scholars And there are narrations about this attributed to the, to the Prophet mm-hmm. uh, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, Khidr means uh, green. 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 Oh, okay. And uh, it is said that that was his name because uh, he would sit on barren land and where he would sit, the land would become green. Oh, Cultivation Allah. would happen. Um, so this is uh, just a backdrop uh, to his name. Um, was he a prophet? Wasn't he a prophet? This is uh, an area of uh, vast discussion. Uh, between uh, the scholars, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased uh, upon them. Uh, the scholars of Tafsir ibn Atiyah and others um, uh, have discussed this. And um, some say that he was a prophet. Mm. Why? Because uh, he received this revelation. He did mm. acts that um, without revelation, you'd say this is a catastrophe. Yes. You know, breaking the property of somebody else. There was a young boy that was killed, for example, mm-hmm. uh, from the actions of Khidr. So, he had to have been a prophet. Mm. And um, some add to this that if we don't say he was a prophet and say he was uh, from the close uh, righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we're going to open the door for other people who feel they're from the righteous names yeah. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do things and attribute it to Allah, uh, attribute it to Allah and say, this is, what, um, this is what I was taught. Subhanallah. So uh, they say that he was uh, a prophet. And also they say that Musa alayhi salam was a prophet of Allah. Mm-hmm. And if Musa was being sent to somebody who wasn't a prophet to seek knowledge, then this could be used as a means of attacking the prophethood mm. of Musa alayhi salam, right? Uh, but in the same breath, the scholars clarify that even if we say he was a prophet and say Musa was a prophet who went to a prophet, this does not mean that knowledge can only be sought from, from someone who's, who's, who's the most knowledgeable or known to be the most knowledgeable. Rather, a person who seeks knowledge, and remember our show is about the etiquettes of seeking knowledge reading, mm-hmm. Uh, a person who seeks knowledge should seek knowledge from wherever that knowledge is and learn from people more, more knowledgeable than him in knowledge, people who are at the same level with him in terms of knowledge mm-hmm. and people who are less knowledgeable in terms of uh, knowledge. Because you might find a person who knows less than you, but they have some information mm-hmm. that you don't have. Don't have yeah. Now, if you take it upon yourself that, no, I'm more knowledgeable than him, I'm his teacher, so whatever he says, I'm not going to listen, you're not doing yourself a favor. And it leads to more uh, difficulties later Meaning on. Meaning well. it leads to you being less knowledgeable. Yeah. And as a result, as a result, you know, this is a manifestation of some form of pride, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you're not going to grow in your knowledge. Because as we said in previous episodes, that the more you learn, the more you should learn how much you don't know. Mm-hmm. Which means the more knowledge you learn, the more humbling, you sh- the, the, more humbling the experience become, is, yes. which means the more humble you should become, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, um, 
uh, you know, uh, this is the discussion between the scholars uh, that he was a prophet because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah revealed to him his mercy. Yes. Uh, t- uh, Allah says Allah revealed to him his, mm-hmm. his, his mercy and taught him from the knowledge of Allah. Mm-hmm. So a person who's taught from the knowledge of Allah uh, means he is uh, a prophet. But look, again, it's a long discussion because we know that Mu- uh, Musa alayhi salam's mother, mm-hmm. she was inspired to put Musa Into on the water, mm-hmm. right? In a basket onto the water. But that doesn't mean she, she was a prophet, it. she was inspired. Allah mm-hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the bee. Mm-hmm. Allah يعني, wahi could mean inspiration mm-hmm. and the bee received inspiration does that mean the bee was a prophet no nobody says the bee was a prophet we say that the bee received an inspiration mm-hmm. so it could be that uh, Khidr received what was genuine inspiration not mm-hmm. was what was made up inspiration in, in, in any case uh, this is uh, the discussion in, in, in a nutshell but you know understanding him to be a prophet or not to be a prophet doesn't really uh, add or subtract from mm-hmm. the story and the lessons itself mm-hmm. but we must highlight that this story and this discussion shouldn't be a means for anybody to do what they want and just mm-hmm. claim that this is knowledge from Allah, Allah this so is very dangerous yes um, the other discussion pertaining to who Khidr was is, is normally uh, a discussion surrounding is he still alive? Has yeah, he passed away? The, right? I'm, mm. I'm not sure if you've come across this Yeah, I've heard uh, rumors. Yeah, yeah. That, that, you know, there's Khidr is still around and there's no evidence to suggest that. So, I mean, do you have anything that you can bring to yeah, life? Yeah, so, um, you know, yeah, the scholars have also discussed this. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a group of scholars, um, reputable scholars, that believe him to still be alive. Subhanallah. To still be alive. Imam Nawawi mentions this uh, attributes to a large group of scholars. Ibn Salah, who is a famous scholar of hadith, mm-hmm. he was of the view that uh, Khidr uh, is, is, is still alive. Imam Nawawi mentions countless uh, people citing narratives of how they met Khidr and things that have happened that have reached, uh, that, that, that meaning that have reached the masses. It's mm-hmm. no knowledge. Mm-hmm. People say, no, we met Khidr here and this is what happened and that is what happened. So. Uh, they say uh, he is still alive. And uh, is it strange that he's still alive? Well, we know about the Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. That oh, is yes. also mentioned in Surah Kahf. Mm-hmm. And they are a group of people from the children of Adam mm-hmm. that are alive till a certain point of time, till mm-hmm. before Qiyamah. And we will go into that when we discuss the story of Dhul Qarnayn. Mm-hmm. Um, so Allah does what He wants, when He wants, how He wants. Mm-hmm. Uh, another group of scholars say, no, He's passed away. Yes. They say He's passed away. Why? Because they say that, look, if he was alive, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam during the Battle of Badr, he said, "Ya Allah, if you don't help these few people here, then there'll be no one who worships you on the face of this earth the way ah, you deserve to yes. be worshipped and the way you should be worshipped." And that alone could be used as an evidence. So this, they say that if why did he say this if mm. he knew about Khidr? Mm. So other scholars respond and say that no, the position of Khidr was on the water, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said on earth, he meant on land. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's a discussion. Yes, it's a no discussion doubt. between uh, the scholars about this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But as I said, it, uh, you know, whether he was a prophet, whether he wasn't a prophet, doesn't bring mm-hmm. relevance to the actual lessons that we can take from the story. And even whether he's alive today or not, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't affect the story and the amazing lessons that we can get from it in no. any way or form. But this is just in answer to your question about who is Khidr and what do we know about him. And um, I think that's all I can think of. If there's anything else, I'll add, inshallah. Insh- Inshallah ta'ala. Uh, with that point, let's get straight into the story, inshallah. Mm-hmm. So uh, when we start with Ayah 66, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Musa said to him, Shall I follow you on a condition that you should teach me right knowledge of what you have been taught? Now, does that suggest that, that Musa alayhi salam is not a prophet now? Has he been, do you, like, you know, has he not got the knowledge? Has he not got divine knowledge? Or, or what's the situation here with yeah, Musa? So, yeah, um, some have actually... Um, Disputed hmm. whether the Musa that visited Khidr was actually Musa alayhi salam. salam yeah. And uh, the reason for this dispute uh, is, um, you know, them saying that, look, if we say that Musa had to go to Khidr, then was he a prophet or wasn't he a prophet? Hmm. Because Allah teaches his prophets. Yes. Right. And um, Ibn Abbas, radiallahu an, he refutes this hmm. and he cites uh, the reason of rev- uh, the reason of the story of Musa and Khidr uh, to us, as he learned from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? As he learned from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that look, uh, it was Musa who gave the speech, and the speech was amazing, and people were moved, and they said, "Is there anyone more knowledgeable than you?" And mm-hmm. he said, "No." Mm-hmm. So Allah told him, "Go to Khidr." So we learn mm-hmm. from this that no, it was actually Musa alaihi salam. Okay, now we know it was actually Musa alaihi salam. 
Mm-hmm. Does this necessitate that now his prophethood or his prophecy was, I mean, his prophethood and his, his, his status as a prophet was reduced in any way? No. Oh, yes. Doesn't mean that. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that. Because prophets are human beings anyway. Mm-hmm. And the difference between them and others is that Allah teaches them. But does this mean Allah has taught them everything? No. Allah has taught them some of his knowledge. Mm-hmm. So they don't know that which Allah hasn't taught them. So it doesn't mean one does not necessitate the other. It shouldn't be a discussion that no, if we saying that Musa didn't know, so he had to go to Khidr, so this necessitates that he wasn't a prophet. Absolutely not. Oh, okay. It, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. He was a prophet who knew what Allah taught him and didn't know what Allah didn't teach him. And Allah sent him on a journey mm-hmm. to learn something else which Allah taught somebody else. And he will know when he sits with that person. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So uh, going on to the next ayah that come after the first interaction with uh, Khidr, uh, we get with the you know the three separate stories within this story. Now, at the beginning, Khidr actually tells Musa alayhi salam that you will not have patience mm. with with knowledge that you don't not know. Mm. Mm. Now, how, what does this teach us? Does it teach us to you know to be quiet when we're learning about different opinions when it comes to our scholars of today, in order to you know come to our own conclusions with extra knowledge learned with that person afterwards, or mm. you know being patient with the teacher regardless of what happens. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, before we discuss this point, we should also discuss how Musa approached Khidr. Mm-hmm. Because there's uh, amazing lessons mm-hmm. um, in that alone. Mm-hmm. In, ha- in, in, in how he, after he introduced himself to Khidr, what he actually uh, pitched to Khidr, mm-hmm. you know. And it was, it was a form of a humble request mm-hmm. to a knowledgeable man. Mm-hmm. You know, that will you permit me mm-hmm. to accompany you and be your companion? So you can teach me from the righteous knowledge which you have been taught. Mm. Uh, in this, there's lessons. Number one, how to request your teacher to teach you. Don't just demand. And number two, to be clear as a student that you know what you want. You don't want to just learn anything. Mm. The specific things that you want to learn. Because Musa was specific from the righteous knowledge which Allah has taught you. Subhanallah, subhanallah. And with that, we come to the end of this part of the episode. Inshallah, we hope to see you after the break. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear respected guests I hope you are well after that short break and ready to learn from the second segment of the show stories from Al Kahf inshallah ta'ala alhamdulillah uh, Sheikh before we ended the first segment we were discussing how to approach those with knowledge and also, you know, to, uh, you know, discuss why it is that you want to learn from them. Yeah. Uh, you know, so now when we move to the, uh, you know, the etiquettes of having a relationship with the mm. teacher, how is that meant to go? Me personally, I find it difficult sometimes to converse with a teacher, especially someone that I've just met for the first time. Mm. So do you have any advice or anything that you could elaborate on this point, inshallah? Yeah, Jazakallah uh, khairan. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. All praises belongs to Allah and peace and salutations be upon the final messenger. It's, uh, it's, it's, you have this question, many are like you have this question. Um, it is just to use the same approach of Musa, where you don't demand, you put in a request. Is it mm. possible? Mm. You know, may I be a student of yours? You know, are there particular procedures? Um, that is the way to go about it. Like you would ask for anything else mm. that you value. Mm. You ask in a respectful way. And you ask your teacher like you would ask your parents in a very respectful way. Mm-hmm. Right? So you, this is how you'd pitch it. And this is how you would um, uh, put in a request. And then you'd be respectful of the answer you receive. Sometimes mm. the teacher is busy. Sometimes mm. the class is full. Sometimes the teacher doesn't have capacity. It's not a case that he's trying to do to harm you. It's not a case that he's trying to, uh, you know, Uh, be a thorn in your progress. No, he just naturally, physically doesn't have the ability. It's a matter of physics. It's a matter of physics, Mm. right? So what does this mean? This means that if he says that, look, you know, I can't. It doesn't mean you should take a stance Mm. with this teacher. That now you say, oh, I asked him and he refused. So I'm not going to listen to his lectures online. I'm not going to listen to his recorded lectures. I just can't get myself to listen to uh, the sheikh anymore. And now you let shaitan use that as a means of of, of making the hearts Mm. uh, go apart. Mm. Right? So this is how you'd go about it. That you got to say, number one, I'm going to be respectful in how I ask. Number two, I'm going to respect the person I'm asking. And number three, I'm going to be respectful of the answer I get, whether it goes to my liking or doesn't go to my Mm. liking. And if it doesn't go to my liking, say, Sheikh, do you know anybody else? Mm. Right? Mm. Because as we said earlier, knowledge must be sought from its family. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, we live in an age where, um, you know, 
many people can pitch themselves to be from the family of knowledge, but they're mm -hmm. not from the family of knowledge. And it's not, as, it's not just this age, mm -hmm. throughout the ages. And that's what the scholars would say, you know, look at the source that you receive your knowledge from. And even in the books of Usul al-Fiqh or Jurisprudence Methodology, which is one of the Islamic sciences, they actually cite this, that how do you know who is a knowledgeable person? Mm. There's ways that the scholars have actually placed in the book. Right? And one of the ways they say is a person's become known over time one of, uh, because he has a reputation of it. Another way is for another scholar who is known for his knowledge to give testimony mm. that this particular person is someone you should seek knowledge from. So this person is known to be a person, a person of knowledge and you go to him and you seek knowledge from him. Right? And he's busy. Or you try to seek knowledge from him and he says, I'm busy, I can't uh, help you. So ask him, who else can I, can I go mm -hmm. to? So this is the way uh, you would go about it. And we learned this from the way of Musa alayhi mm salam. -hmm. Um, but um, the other point that you asked upon, which, or, 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 or summarized from what we said just before the break, which is important, is for the student of knowledge also to know what he wants to learn. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know what you want to learn, then how effective is your journey going to be? Mm -hmm. And if you know what you want to learn, then you can choose your teachers appropriately. Not every teacher can teach you everything, right? True. Teachers specialize as well. Mm. And no doubt a person who specialized in, in, in a field um, is somebody who can um, you know, afford you a better, greater benefit right? than someone who's just touched on the fields mm. on, uh, you know, uh, at a shallow level. When you, when, you, when you specialize, then no doubt you're going to have information that others don't have. Yes and understandings and reflections that others don't have. So when you know that, okay, I want this, I want to learn tafsir, I want to learn fiqh, tafsir is to learn the explanation mm -hmm. of the Quran, I want to learn Islamic jurisprudence, which is the fiqh, I want to learn the laws and regulations and how to interpret text and how to understand text and how to un understand evidences and work with evidences and what is evidence and what is an evidence. When you know that this is what I want, or I want to learn Arabic language as a tool to, so I could study the Islamic sciences. So now you go to an Arabic language teacher. Yes. Or you go to a teacher who specializes in fiqh and usul. Hmm. Right? Or you go to a teacher who specializes in tafsir. Musa knew what he wanted to learn. And he knew the person that will give him that knowledge. So he went to him. And he told him that I want specific knowledge. Hmm. I, don't want to, I don't want the knowledge that you have from your experience. Or the righteous knowledge. I, don't want, I want the righteous knowledge, meaning the knowledge which Allah has revealed to you. Hmm. And hasn't revealed to me. Right? Because that's what he said, he specified, right? Mm. That from the knowledge that Allah has taught you, this righteous knowledge. And remember we spoke mm. about al-ilm al-ladunni, which is no, the knowledge from Allah, Allah, which Allah teaches to uh, some of his mm. creations, mm. some of his prophets. So he was specific. Mm. I, I mean, if Musa as a prophet who is upon amazing guidance, if this is his way, then no doubt this is the way of guidance. Mm. Right? If we're not going to learn from him, where are we going to get our etiquettes of seeking knowledge mm. from uh, Ma'aruf? Huh? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, it's very true. Uh, moving on to the next ayah, straight after Musa, uh, you know, kindly requests Khidr to join him on his journey. Uh, Khidr replies with, surely you cannot have patience with me. Yeah. Now, this is very interesting. Uh, and, you know, the answer that I'm trying to, you know, the question I'm trying to ask here is, is that how did Khidr know? Yeah. yeah how did he know that, that Musa, someone he's, you know, just mm. met for the first time, won't have patience with him? Well, I mean, the easy answer would be just to say, uh, one of the easy answers would say that a good teacher knows. <laughs> But, um, I mean, if Khidr was receiving information, um, as we will come to learn, mm. that he received, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him. Mm. Um, so this is one aspect. That perhaps you might ask me next is that, okay, yeah. but if Musa was so amazing, he was a prophet of Allah and he was amazing, then why would he be impatient as, mm. a, as a person? Because he knows how to seek knowledge. Mm. Um, and the scholars have given answers to that. Mm -hmm. They've discussed it. I mean, you know, in fact, it's a lesson for us, right? Which calms us and keeps us motivated. And it's a lesson that stops us from becoming frustrated. But rather, it's, it's, it's a reality that we learn from this that teaches us that, you know what, we shouldn't be frustrated to the extent where we drop out, mm -hmm. but rather frustrated enough to do something about it, to, mm -hmm. to, to change ourselves. And um, the point that I'm, I, I want to reach is, some people by nature, it's their, it's their human nature to be impatient. Mm. It's, it's, they just don't have the ability. It's just the way they are sometimes. It's, yeah. just, it's human nature. Right? It's human nature. Some people are introvert. Some mm. people are extrovert. You know, some people um, you know, are, are more perceptive of uh, events. Some people are more judgmental of events. People have different character types. Right? You can teach a class and teach the same knowledge, but different people approach that knowledge in different ways. Mm. Right? Uh, some people are more brave to question the knowledge they're receiving. Some people mm. are more accepting of it, even if they didn't understand 
certain particulars of it. Mm -hmm. It just goes down to the student.